So for our project, we decided to focus on education and economic correlation in the US. To begin our presentation, my team members and I will give a little introduction in, about ourselves. Um, for myself, my name is Cheyenne Peterson. I have a bachelor's degree in anthropology with a minor in teaching English as a second language. And I'm originally from North Dakota, but I recently moved to Minneapolis to start my career in data. Good morning, everybody. My name is Zeeshan Pervez. I am transitioning to a data career from education and I have a bachelor's in biology and a master's in education. Hello everyone, my name is Sarayan Gandaluri. I have a, batch, a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and a minor in Business Management Administration. I'm from Minneapolis. Hello uh, y'all, I'm Rob. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics and I like numbers and music, particularly from the early 20th century in America. All right, so now we'll continue here. So our project goals for this project were to gather and analyze US Census data as well from uh, the National Center for Education Statistics and the Bureau of Labor and Statistics to determine if there exists a correlation between educational attainment level, employment, and income for citizens in the United States. And we're gonna use machine learning models to determine how well certain factors can be predicted based on the data that we gathered. So some initial questions that guided this project are, what is the per capita income for different levels of education? What is the average household income per state compared to the US as a whole? Does household income correlate to educational attainment? What is the unemployment rate for different levels of education? And how has educational attainment changed through the years in the US? And how does that affect income? So for the ETL, as I stated before, some of the sources were, um, we used the current population survey from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. We as you well used a table from um, the National Center for Education Statistics, and we used some census data. And for cleaning methods, we used pandas multi-indexing to kind of preserve the funky Excel structure of some of the tables that we had. So when you use a pandas multi-index, the outer index column has to be the same length as the uh, middle index and the inner index. So that's something to keep in mind because that'll affect um, like our last cleaning step there. We also used requests and beautiful soup to extract HTML tables from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics and beautiful soup to parse through that. Um, and for the properties of cyclic groups, you know, the data is messy. And if you can discern some kind of pattern to clean it, that is very helpful. And for the Bureau of Labor and Statistics data that we gathered, um, you if you realize that the data is cyclic or periodic with respect to a year or a month or a day, that can greatly save your time. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Cheyenne and uh, Servani to talk about our visualizations. Thank you, Rob. Um, to present our visualizations, we decided to utilize Dash to create a dashboard that can present them in a more um, digestible way. And to do that, I will go over to our dashboard. Um, for our dashboard, we created nearly all of our visualizations in a Jupyter notebook before transferring them to a Python file and then creating our dashboard from there. We created a multi-page dashboard that filters our visualizations based on the questions that we had for our project. As you can see, we are on the home page. Just it kind of gives an introduction into kind of what we did in the um, whole purpose of this dashboard which is to explore the data sets about education, income, and unemployment rates in the US. And then I will tab over to our first question. Um, the first question refers to what is the per capita income for the different levels of education? What we found is that individuals with advanced degrees typically have higher incomes than those with only a high school GED and so on. However, we theorize that that would be the case. What is interesting is that this wasn't the case 40 years ago as in around the 80s, it seemed that people with only high school degrees or GEDs were typically making more than people with just the advanced degrees. It's also interesting to see that females weren't really being recorded at this point. Um, there could be many points into why that is. Um, their women may have typically weren't earning degrees or joining the workforce in this time. Uh, to further go into demographics, men have historically and presently had higher incomes, no matter what the educational attainment level. Um, it's also interesting to look at the racial demographics when it comes to earning, earnings based on education. 
with people who identify as Asian or in a combination of an Asian ethnicity making more than people of other ethnicities. Um, what's also interesting is that people were, it wasn't until 2002 that they were even being recorded by the Census Bureau when it came to their educational attainment and their earnings in that. Um, a feature that makes these graphs compelling is not is that not only can you change the year and look at the different um, data by doing that, but you can also press the play button and see the changes in live action when it comes to the different degrees and their average incomes. And then I'll go over to the second tab. Um, our second tab refers to the question, what is the average household income per state compared to the U.S. as a whole? Um, household income is the combined gross cash income of all members of a household. So compared to, comparatively, there are many states whose average in household income is actually much more than the national average. If we look at 2019, you can see that Washington, D.C. has the highest average household income when it comes to the national average. Um, what's interesting is that if you go back to 1990, states like Alaska and Connecticut had higher household incomes than they do in 2019, as they have some of the lower ones now. Um, for the second graph, this is a choropleth map that kind of shows the different state incomes, just not compared to the U.S. as a whole. What's interesting is if you press the play button, you can see from night, it plays from 1990 to 2019. So you can see the uh, household incomes change in live action. And with that, I will pass it on to Sarvani. Thank you, Cheyenne. So for the third question, we are focusing on the unemployment rate for each of different levels of education. And our hypothesis is that those with a higher, those with a lesser degree will have a higher unemployment rate compared to those with a higher degree. And for this visualization, for this question, we're focusing on the second and third visualization. So for the second for the second visualization shows the unemployment rate for each of the different educational attainment levels through, from 2015 and 2020. As you can see, um, those with a no high school diploma have the highest unemployment rate, while those with advanced degree have the lowest unemployment rate. And something interesting I noticed was that from the year 2019 and 2020, the unemployment rate rose significantly. Um, we believe this is due to inflation at the time or possible, uh, possibly the early stage of COVID-19 pandemic. And for the third visualization, as you can see right here, shows the comparison between unemployment rate versus employment rate for a civilian labor force in the year 2020. From, um, a, from an educational attainment perspective. The red, the red represents the employment rates while the green represents the unemployment rates. As you can see, those with advanced degree have a higher employment rate compared to those with no high school diploma. And those with no high school diploma have a highest unemployment rate compared to those with advanced degree. So if you're looking at the employment rate, you can see that there's a 30% difference between no high school diploma and an advanced degree. And for the unemployment rate, there is a 4% difference between a no high school diploma and advanced degree. So if we go to the fourth question, the fourth question highlights the correlation between household income to uh, between household income and educational attainment. And our hypothesis is that those with a higher degree will have a higher household income compared to those with a lesser degree. And for this one, we're probably, probably be focusing on the second visualization. As you can see in the second, the second visualization shows the average household income for each of the different educational degrees from, from the year of 2000 to 2019. As you can see, those adva the advanced degree graduates have the, overall have the highest household income. And they also experience the largest increase, they also experience the largest increase Income rising from the year, rising from seventy one thousand in the year of two thousand, going up to one hundred six thousand within the year of uh, twenty nineteen. Something interesting I found was that the high school graduates have a larger income gap of twenty four thousand compared to those with associate's degree who have who have a difference of fifteen thousand. And if we go to the last question, the last question highlights 
uh, how has educational attainment changed throughout the years in the U.S. and how has income changed? And for this one, we'll be focusing on the first and the fourth visualization. For the first visualization, shows the per capita income for different education attainment levels through the uh, through 2010 2019. As you can see, overall, the uh, those with advanced degree have the highest income compared to those that not not a high school graduate have the lowest income. And something I found interesting was that the income line for individuals who have an advanced degree fluctuates the most compared to any other line. And for fourth visualization, the fourth visualization shows the the average income from in the U.S. from 2015 and 2019. As you can see, from those years, the income has uh, rose significantly from starting from 91,000 going up to 104,000 in the year 2019. And something interesting I found was that within the year 2017, the data was reported twice, leading to a stable income from 2017 and 2018. And we believe that there might be some error when the data was reported. But however, the overall trend in indicated that the mean income was rising as the years went by. And now I'll pass on to Zishan for the machine learning. So for our machine learning portion, we wanted to just basically ask how well can the features of our data set be used to predict the unemployment rate in the U.S.? So given the data that we used, we felt that a supervised learning algorithms would be the best way to go. And in further research into algorithms that fit that description, we felt that decision tree, K nearest neighbors, linear regression, and ridge regression would be the most applicable. So our predictive features, the features that we use from the data set to predict unemployment rate were the number of unemployed people, the number of employed people, and then the employment population ratio. So those are the three features that we chose to predict the unemployment rate. So what you see here were the scatter plots from the four regression models. That red line in the middle, this is the line of best fit. And essentially what that means is, so for example, if the predicted value is a five and our model predicted a five, then it'll plot as five, five, and that'll be as close to this diagonal line as possible. So generally speaking, the closer the points are to that red line, the more accurate our model was in predicting unemployment rate. So just based, just looking at the graphs, we can see that decision tree was the most accurate because the points are more closely clustered to the line of best fit, whereas the other three, the, line, the points are more uh, dispersed, so they were less accurate. And our scores were the following. So our linear regression performed at 0.54 score accuracy. So it was about 54% accurate in predicting unemployment rate. Decision tree was 0.78, so it was about 80%. K nearest neighbors was 0.57, and then ridge regression was 0.54. Now, what's interesting here is that clearly we can see that decision tree was the most accurate, but the other three, although they were lower, they were still very similar in their scores. And I believe the reason that is, is because decision tree functions differently from the other three. So the way a decision tree works is that root data is fed into the model, and then that model will make binary decisions as to how to classify each data point. So for example, um, is feature A greater than feature B? Yes, then you send it to the left portion of this diagram. If it's not, you send it to the right. And then you do that again. Is feature B greater than C? Yes, send it to one spot. No, send it to another. And you repeat that process over and over again until the model is trained well enough to make a prediction. And it functions differently from the others because the other three are more computational. Whereas this is just, you know, it's classifying the features based on certain parameters. So just given how it functions, it seems to be the best at predicting unemployment rate given the data that we have. All right, y'all. And to summarize things, uh, you know, what we found, we found that average income has increased throughout the years. An individual with a degree typically has higher income than someone who does not. And so that makes sense. 
Average state income has changed significantly from 1990 to 2019. The working population total is increasing, but so is the unemployment rate. But there are many factors which may contribute to that. Someone with an advanced degree is more likely to be employed than somebody with just a GED. Average income has increased greatly for people with advanced degrees, while income for people with no GED has remained relatively the same. And now, what, what can we do with any of this? So given the results of our analysis, organizations can leverage the following recommendations. We could do like targeted marketing based on educational attainment levels for each state, because we have broadly shown the, the pattern or the trends. Um, you can adjust compensation to market standards based on location, education, level, household size, et cetera. Um, we could use the unemployment data to offer positions in strategic locations. Like uh, if the unemployment rate is high in Alaska, maybe we could, I don't know, set, set up Dev 10 in Alaska. Uh, we can uh, offer traditional and or alternative education based on education data for each state. And we can adjust educational requirements for positions based on the observed trends in educational attainment. And these are our references here. And that's all we got. Um, we'll open it up to questions. Thank you all for your time. This is a great project. Love seeing how you took data that can be a little bit dry and really brought it to life in your dashboard, especially that play button, making it um, kind of animated and seeing trends over time. Um, open to any questions. We have time for one question from Zoom. And people are curious if you had to uh, go back to the start of the project, you had a little time machine, go back two weeks, how would you have uh, done something differently in your project? What, what decisions would have you made differently? Here, I got one thing that I would really have liked to have done, which was increase the granularity of the data that we have, because all of the data we acquired from the Census Bureau and whatnot is aggregated at the national and state level. And I believe that if we had access to some kind of raw, unfiltered data at the individual level, then we would have found something, you know, a little more interested and interesting that we can use to, I don't know, micro-target people. 